This is Daniel, and today I want to talk to you about the performance monitor that is included in almost every version of Windows, the home editions, the server editions, everything. To open it, just click on the start bar and start tapping performance, and it should pop right up. Now, in Vista and some of the home editions, it's called the reliability and performance monitor. Some of the older editions, it'll just say performance monitor. And once we have that open, Go ahead and click on the performance monitor over here. In some versions, it may go directly to the performance monitor. Now what you see here is uh, the default monitor, which is the processor time, or total amount of the processor that's being used at any given time. And it's updating in real time about once per second. Now that's pretty good if you want to know how much of your processor is being used, but this tool is really a lot more powerful than that. Let's go ahead and click the X to remove that counter, and we'll click the plus sign to add a new counter. As you can see, there's a lot of different counters here, .NET, ASP, if you're a programmer, that can be very handy, a SQL Server, Exchange Server, databasing, there's just a lot of different things you can do. Uh, there's even, you know, ones dealing with memory, physical disks, uh, server utilization, things like that. Now let me go ahead and do memory available megabytes for instance. I'll add that one in there. While I'm at it, I'll go ahead and add a physical disk. We should be able to get some data on there. There's Ready Boost Cache, which is turned on in this system. So I'll turn that one on. Say how many times it reads per second. Add that one. click OK and see what kind of data we get. As you can see, uh, the memory is maxed out up here at the very, very top, and the reads on the uh, Ready Boost is nearly nothing. But if I open some programs, the Ready Boost cache backs up as it's reading that d a little bit of memory on your Ready Boost. So that's basically how it works. But looking at things in real time is useful, but sometimes you're going to want to look over a longer period. In order to do that, you need to create a data collector set. Go ahead and click on data collector set over here on the left-hand pane. Actually click on user defined. We'll right-click new data set and give it a name. My data sounds good. You want to create a manual one so you have more control over what you want to uh, count. Performance counter. Then click Add. And this one, uh, say for instance, we want to find out why a system is being bogged down at a certain time. Say users are complaining that they cannot access a server at a specific uh, time or maybe on and off throughout the day. So we want to know how much uh, resources are being used. There's kind of a, a picture of the overall view for over the course of a week. We'll go ahead and add processor time. And in this case, I'll add uh, some, some physical disk information. We'll say the total disk read time and write time. Click OK. This is your sample interval. The default is about 15 seconds, which is fine if you're going to check for a day. But if you're going to check for a week, you might want to increase that to maybe, you know, 300 seconds, which is about every five minutes, or even larger. I'm going to go ahead and make it fairly short so we can get some data in a hurry. I'll do every five seconds. Click Next. This is where your log will go. The default directory is you know, C slash perflogs. That's fine for me. Uh, click Next again. You can either save and close or start the data set now. I'm going to save and close. Now, in order to start this data set, you can right click on it and click Start. You can also right click on it and click Properties. You can set up a schedule if you want it to you know, run at a specific time throughout the week. You can have it run multiple times. You can change the directory you save it to by clicking on the directory tab. And you can have it automatically stop under certain conditions. 
what we're going to do right now is just go ahead and start it. So right click on it and click start. Now I'm going to show you how to generate a report using the data that you've already collected. So click on reports on the left hand pane. Open up user defined. There's the my data we just created but there's also one here called disk usage. That's one I created earlier and it's the same counters but it should already have some data. So just double click on that and it opens up into a report. Now it only shows the processor just like if you were you know, doing a real time it starts out just showing the one thing. You'll have to click to add our other counters. Go ahead and do that. Physical disk and click OK. If you want to turn any of them on and off you can do that down here. As you can see, uh, during this middle period, right through here, our processor usage is up above 80% at several times, and our disk usage is all the way up to 100%. And both the read and the write is spiking all over the place. So this would be a uh, indicator, you know, that there's a lot of activity going on during that time. And say, for instance, uh, as we discussed before, the user was saying they were having trouble, you know accessing the server at a specific time. If you had a variety of counters on there, memory usage, disk usage, processor usage, you could open it up and say, wow, well the disk usage is tremendous, you know, from 720 to 750. And maybe we've got too much going on, uh, we might be able to uh, start an investigation and see what exactly is going on at that time. I happen to know that that was uh, an automatic backup, is the reason the disk was so high. And it also coincided with a virus check. Uh, so that sent the processor and the disk usage through the roof. So after doing some investigation you might say well maybe we can move one of those to a less busy time of the day. And that's basically how the reliability and performance monitor works.